Bienvenue tous. Welcome to Reporters here on France 24. This week, we take you to the new crossroads of the world's illicit drug trade. The uh, port city of Mombasa in Kenya has become then the place where the cartels are targeting for trafficking of cocaine and heroin. You see by its favourable placement there, right on the sea. And of course, now that the traditional routes via the Middle East, the Balkans into Europe have been blocked off by conflict, by the migrant crisis, the uh, cartels, the traffickers looked for a different way to get their illicit haul into the money market. Our report then, Mombasa, the new hub of the world drug trade. Under cover of darkness, Joey steers his boat toward the deep sea. A few times a month, when the tides are calm, he sets off to meet ships from the Middle East and Asia. Joey is a critical player in the East African drug trade, carrying contraband by boat into Kenya. I get a call from my boss telling me where to go. Then I go to meet the boat and they give me three to four packages, sometimes even five. I come back to shore and there's a vehicle waiting for me to receive the goods. The job is profitable. He makes up to 900 euros per drop, nearly the average annual salary for a Kenyan. But the risks are high too. It's a terrible job, really dangerous. The more you work, the more you know. And then, one day, they ask you to come alone to get the goods. Some of my friends disappeared at that time. We never saw them again after they left to do their job. Joey will come back a few days after setting off with several kilograms of narcotics. Mules will then transit the drugs through Mombasa, Kenya's second largest city and East Africa's largest port. It's now also a bustling crossroads of illegal trafficking, with heroin coming in from Pakistan and cocaine coming from South America. This is a plastic paper. I'm doing the first wrapping. I'm doing the packing now for the pipi that are going to be swallowed. There are many like David who shuttle drugs by air between Kenya and foreign cities. For his own security, he doesn't want to tell us his destination, but he does share some hints. You got to know one thing. Yeah. We make more money in Europe. For most, most traffickers, Europe is the best destination. Maybe three out of five trips goes through. If it is cocaine, I'm making 6,000 per kilo. If it is two kilo, I'm making 11, 10, between 10 and 11,000. After wrapping, he has to test the balloons to make sure they're watertight. The stakes are high. If one breaks in his stomach, he'll die of an overdose. It's a fate he's willing to grapple with because muling drugs from Mombasa is easy money. We receive it in Kenya, and then we depart it from Kenya easily than from any other countries in Africa. But Kenya, especially because the, the receiving part of it, the receiving in Kenya, you get it easily. The Kenyan drug market is estimated to bring in more than 100 million euros annually. The trade mainly benefits the kingpins at the top. 
This mansion belongs to a well-known businessman in Mombasa. He's suspected of being involved in drug trafficking, and the police have raided his house. You can't leave anything here. You must take everything you find. Is there anything related to our investigation? Sniffer dogs move through all the rooms, and the house is turned upside down. It's big news in Mombasa, the police inviting local media to show off their so-called war on drugs. But their record tells another story. There was a Nepalese man inside. Uh, we arrested him. He was in possession of cannabis. He had a joint and a half. We also found the equivalent of 57,000 shillings. That was in Kenyan and Nepalese money. The Kenyan interior minister recently declared a renewed battle against traffickers. Uh, we have uh, a multi, multi of teams on the ground, running across the county, uh, conducting uh, searches and arrests of those that we get information, both intelligence and through the public. We rush them immediately on the seat of that information. A few days later, this county commander of three years will be transferred because of his inability to stem the drug trade. Some police officers say their own colleagues are the ones protecting drug barons. This investigator is keen to tell his side of the story. He's arrested several traffickers, most of whom were immediately released. He's scared to talk to us during the day or to show his face, fearful of reprisals. When we take them back to the station, we're threatened by certain superiors. They tell us we'll be transferred to zones where there are terrorists. Some chiefs receive bribes from the big drug traffickers. Frustrated and scared for his own future, he plans to quit in the coming months. Ineffective policing of incoming drugs has flooded the local market with cheap product. Drug addicts are regular fixtures on Mombasa street corners. Mukhtar has been using heroin for 19 years and comes to the center to get free, clean syringes. Heroin has become much easier to find in Mombasa. One government study says 3.5% of the city's population has tried it. You see? It's a cylinder. It's a water to use. This something is after. After use injection. He regularly talks with counselors at this NGO for reminders of basic hygiene. Thanks to these meetings, I know what awaits me outside and how to avoid all the dangers of the street. Aside from the risk of overdose, the rates of hepatitis C and AIDS in this community are high. Nearly 100 people come to the center daily for help. I, I can't say that there's a specific uh, category of people that choose because uh, some of them are learned, some of them are school dropouts, and uh, they have different issues. Some of them even have professionals. How it started, uh, it's true tourism, and uh, it was the beach boys who were only affected with the use, but now, that thing has gone out of hand and everyone has access for it. 
Historically, Kenya hasn't been hit by widespread use of hard drugs, but that's changing with the number of addicts on the rise. Between 2,500 and 5,000 people are addicted to heroin in Mombasa alone. I started 19 years ago. I had a friend who was shooting heroin. He often came by my house and we'd smoke together. I asked him if I could try to find out what it was like. Years of shooting up have destroyed his veins, and he misses a few times. If I really do it, that something, get some money, and then go to buy the stuff. If you get some money, nothing, another question, you go to buy the stuff. From morning to evening, maybe four, five. Or stuff like this, or five per day. But the local market for this cheap heroin is just a tiny part of the trafficking in Mombasa. Hidden in an apartment nearby, David is almost ready to head to the airport. He prays to survive the long trip. So so, Krita, Krita Nige, Krita Niho. I want to ask God to protect me. I just want him to help me resist this thing until at least it reached, I reach the destination. The food I'm using supposed to... A mix of milk and soggy cereal helps him to more easily swallow the cocaine balloons. You got to pre prepare the journey for a maximum of 12 hours. Because the digestion, when someone... When, 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 when someone eat, use food, eh? use food, he has a maximum time. The food can stay in the stomach for a maximum of 12 hours. He can still have a hard time ingesting the product, even as an experienced mule. Confident he'll avoid detection, he's off for Mombasa International Airport. He'll return here in a few months for another long haul to Dubai or to Europe. It's a trip that will either pay off big or, if he's finally caught, land him a hefty prison term. That report by our special correspondents at Mombasa, the new hub of the world drugs trade. Thank you very much uh, for watching this programme. You can, of course, uh, see our film again via the website www.france24.com. Until next time, you've been watching Reporters. Do stay with us.